What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself, where we change lives through volleyball, training, and inspirational content. Welcome to my Volleyball Coach Reaction to High Q Season 3, Episode 2. If you're new to this channel, I'm a volleyball coach, volleyball player, and personal trainer who provides volleyball tutorials, jump training workouts, and other cool volleyball videos. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more content. This is one of the best quotes I've heard as an art student or art teacher, and it does make sense. There is greater depth perception when you have two eyes, and when we think about the newer smartphones with better camera technology, it's because they have multiple lenses. So thanks again for that quote. I'm definitely stealing this one for my art students. I'm glad you appreciated all of my animation and illustration analysis. I think it's really cool how people enjoy anime for multiple reasons, not just for an amazing storyline and the character development, but also deeper levels of art beyond just the cool looking graphics. Thanks for pointing out that detail. I was actually a little confused as to why he said, hello left. That almost sounds like some of those poorly translated phrases that you see in Asian restaurants where you know they're just typing something in Google Translate and then when it translates to English it just means something totally different but it does make sense now now that you explain that left means left-handed for Ushiwaka. If you've been enjoying my videos please consider supporting me on Patreon where you receive exclusive access to my monthly live Q&A sessions, monthly podcasts, behind the scenes footage, and more. Now let's get this high Q party started. The threat of the left. Cannot wait to see this action here. And of course he's going to have impressive hitting lines. I think they already served the first point, right? Okay, this is a replay just from the ending scene. There we go. Well, hello, left. Now I understand. Do we have another intro that I get to watch? Actually, I remember the the steam coming off the body, so I think this is the same intro as the first episode, which makes sense because Shiratozo Shirito Izawa and Karasuno are still playing. I apologize for my voice. I just coached a volleyball tournament yesterday, so it's extra scratchy. Hopefully I sound more like Bob Ross when my voice is worn from coaching. Man, this this animation continues to be excellent. Out. Ooh. Just on the sideline, one of the best places to serve. In between the sideline and a player, but one of the hardest places to aim because there's a high risk for error there. Skip off the tape. Another nervous play. Looks like they're probably just nervous. Because this is the biggest game that they've played. And especially against one of the best schools in the area. <laughs> That's why we need multiple captains to wake the team up. <laughs> That's okay. Sometimes you just need to get angry. Anger is a tool. It can be used for good or bad. And even even Kageyama's hair is even more detailed. Finally they got their play set up. Dig from Shiotoizawa and Ushiwaka gets set again and he gets another kill. And for the first time we see a little frustration from Nishinoya. You want to know something interesting? If I'm interpreting what Nishinoya is saying correctly, this is something that I actually tell my players in terms of how to develop more self-awareness during a game. I always tell them that first time is luck, second time's a pattern, third time is my fault. You're allowed to make mistakes on the court, but if you continue to make the same mistakes again and again, that's completely on you and no longer what the opponent is doing well. 
I love that dedication. And that also is going to give your front row some confidence when you tell your team like, hey, I'm going to fix it. We got our volleyball explanations here. Most left-handed left -handed hitters are going to hit from the right side because they're already open to the court. And they're called opposite hitter because they are opposite of the setter. So I like these these explanations so non-volleyball players can understand the game. Still think it's interesting that they have Daichi as opposite and he's a primary passer. Usually you have both outside hitters and a libero be a primary passer. Super aces. Wow, did he just hit right over Tsuki? And Tsuki's pretty tall and he's a good blocker. One way to stop a hitter that just jumps super high and reaches super tall is to actually wait longer on the block so you might be able to catch the ball on the way up because if he out jumps you or outreaches you if you jump at the same time like your normal timing he's just going to hit right over you at his peak but if you can catch it almost on the way up that's one way to help deal with someone like that the other way to deal with it is to actually scoot up your defense it's a riskier move because then you leave the backcourt open but if the hitter is just hitting right over you pretty consistently then and your block is doing everything they can, then you just have to step up a little bit and just take the straight down hit right over the block. Oh, we got a kill from Tanaka. That's a huge relief when you've been struggling against a team and you lose like five or six points in the beginning and you get your first kill and then you finally can breathe and realize like, okay, we can hang with this team now. And of course, it was Tanaka, the fiery player. Yeah, they're lining up against the left-handed hitter is, is different. They need to scoot their block. Still a little bit more in to get in front of his left shoulder here. Ooh, crossing patterns. <laughs> it's easy for spectators to, to say that, but people don't realize against a good team, it's, it's so hard to read multiple hitters when they're in system. I like that setter's haircut, the bowl cut. I used to have that when I was a kid. I'm curious how good the other Shiro Toizawa players are. Three to eight. This is a, probably a timeout. Oh, technical timeout. Wow. This is a tele. All right. This is a televised game. This is a commercial break. All right. Let's see what Coach Ukai talks. What type of advice he gives for blocking. Yeah, not bad. I mean, I'm sure they're trying to block well. There's the Gundam cannon. Oh, easy dig. Quick transition. And they got a soft block, finally. Alright, that's better. Even if you don't get the block, if you slow it down, you increase their chances of touching the ball. Hinata looks like he's ready to want to get on the court and try to block him. Oh, the scouting report, that's right. I like that, Nishinoya. Talking like a badass. <laughs> total, total defense.
Mm, so they're gonna funnel every ball to Nishinoya as their best chance to stop Ushijima, to force him to hit down the line. And then Nishinoya, that's their best chance to play. Oh, still can't control it. But give him time. It's still early in the game. There you go, deep breath. That's the best way to reset yourself. Give him time to adapt to the speed. Oh, the spin, that's right. Man, this, this, this anime is super introspective here. You have to kind of angle your platform the other way. So you, you have to counteract the spin by dropping a right shoulder. I'll just pause the video and talk about it instead of trying to talk while they're talking. So this this is really a, a, an important technique to use when you have a left-handed jump spin server. When they're when if I'm facing the server as a right-handed hitter, most of the time you're used to passing the ball that's curving from left to right, and that's what we're trained to pass in volleyball gyms because most people are going to be right-handed. But for a left-handed server. You have to consciously change the angle of your body because the ball is going to be curving most of the time from right to left. So you have to compensate for that extra spin by angling your platform a little more to the right than you think you would. Because if you just keep it straight like you normally would, it will bounce off to the left. So you have to counteract that spin. So I'm curious if that's what they're going to do on, on defense as well to kind of pre-angle your platform to the right to counteract that type of spin. Oh, there we got. Okay, that wasn't. That was not Ushiwaka. Man, Karasuna is just struggling, but that's normal. This is the, the highest level team they've played before. Man, another bounce to the ceiling. He's just crushing it. Ushijima is every bit as good as he was built up to be. Oh, Yamaguchi! The camera is on Yamaguchi! That means he's going to do something. Yeah, when you're overly focused on one player, then you lose track of the other ones, which is also normal. Can't blame Tsuki. Well, especially when... If, if Shiro Toizawa is passing this well, they're... They're going to run their offense too easily. they got to find a way to get some tougher serves. Standing float. Ooh, rare error. Karasuno's only chance to actually compete and get close to scoring 20 points against Ushijima. I'm going to bounce back and forth between Ushiwaka and Ushijima, but luckily, I think they're both correct. They have to serve tougher, and that means place it in really difficult areas or serve at a higher velocity, because if they serve their normal game, it looks like Shiro Toizawa is just passing really you know, easy passes, so that means they can set up all four of the hitters very comfortably, and you saw how Tsuki had trouble tracking Ushijima and then trying to keep track of the other hitters as well. Now when you serve tougher, you force the pass to come off the net, which slows down the opponent's offense, which gives your block and defense more time to set up. And more importantly, it makes their offense more predictable. Let's say the opponent passes the ball behind the three meter line. You can't really run any quick attacks to the middle, so you know you only have two hitting options left side and right side and against a team like Shiro Toizawa it's probably going to go to the right side. You also disrupt the, the hitting rhythm of the team. If you serve too easy, they pass in a good rhythm, they set in a good rhythm and everyone is in a full easy attacking rhythm. So now that Asahi is about to serve, I'm hoping that this is what their new strategy is. They have to serve tough. Nice receive. <laughs> I 
Ah, yeah. Oh, is he instinctual? He is instinctual. Whoa. He's able to time it with Ushijimba. He's going to hit around him. Okay. Good timing. Hit right through the hands, but he actually slowed the ball down. They're getting closer. We still have yet to see Hinata on the court. Oh, that's scary. The fact that he's still not hitting in full force. Wow, he's, he, if he can roll shot too, that's pretty ma nasty. Oh, Inoshita. Maybe he'll come on and make a performance. I think we need Yamaguchi to be able to come on and serve a couple float serves, disrupt their, their passing rhythm. Uh, I like his... Uh, we finally get to see deeper into Tsuki's mind. He He's starting to get a better blocking rhythm, more intuitive, like his brother says. But he doubted himself. Look at those muscular thighs. Oh, this is the first time he's serving too? Let's see what his legendary serve looks like. Of course, with a beautiful animation. So good. <laughs> Sometimes... <laughs> I've been there before, sometimes you just get in the way and then you're like, what the heck just happened? I love that. That's good words from your captain. Wow, honest thoughts from Tsuki here. The fact that he even cares enough to worry about not being a service seat passer means that he cares more. <laughs> oh, maybe Tsuki is going to learn from Nishinoya's confidence wanting the ball. He's Rasakai! Come on, Nishinoya! Do the Eric Shoji. Yeah! He got it. That's the first ball they got out. That's a huge confidence booster, knowing you can at least pass it once. Man, I like Nishinoya. I've always liked him, but I like him even more now. His unwavering belief. That's his best asset, is his confidence. Wow, even got the sister serving. And we got different halftime music. Alright, they got to take advantage of this and crush it back. That That's going to be a huge momentum changer. And looks like Tsuki is the one that might have to do it. Come on, Tsuki. Oh, is Kageyama going to hit it? Oh, no, he does a fake. Ho, ho. That was pretty sick. <laughs> that was pretty sick. What what confidence from Kageyama to do a fake spike and then set. And Tsuki's just standing still. <laughs> Even Shito Hizawa was impressed. Interesting, no one scares me more than Oikawa. That, that's just how much he respects Oikawa's ability to make us team better. Ah, oh, yes, we get to see Hinata, and of course the opponent's going to doubt his ability but this is our chance to see what he not thinking he's been dreaming to play against a good team like this easy flow serve he's gonna hit down the middle oh the pump one. <laughs> oh man 
The pump one is one of the super old school techniques and I'm glad it's still popular in Japanese high school. Actually, in the Asian style volleyball is more trick plays and something that you would see back in the 80s. So what the middle did was he went hard for the traditional A quick timing, paused, and then jumped again because he, he wanted to wait for Hinata to jump first and then he jumped again to wait for him to go on the way down. So that's why he didn't have to hit that hard because he already had no blocker up. You usually don't see this at the highest level right now because middle blockers are so big now that even if they get faked out, they're like six foot 10 to seven feet tall, they actually can just hop up again right away and still get a block. But it's really fun to see, um, especially for some of the Asian teams that out there. And some college teams will do this as well, especially in, in Canada. Um, and actually, I think Brazil, they, they like to be creative with their offense too. So not to say that it's impossible, but it's, it's not as effective as it was back in the 80s and the 90s. Eighteen to nine. Tendo, is this is that his name? Tendo. Oh, just out. Good call. Costume just needs to go for it and rip it on the serve, even if you miss. Oh, we got an ace. Not bad. The fact that Costume is not giving up. That's the best part about this scene. Another great passing technique there. And we threw them out of system, force a bump set. But Shiro Tozawa, it's still too good. Man, that, that hair is really bad. <laughs> Ooh, let's go Kageyama. Let's see what that means. Are they gonna run their trick place? Ooh, back real quick. And Nishinoya finally gets another one. He's dialed into Ushijima's rhythm. All right, Hinata is gonna go for it. Wow, he gets an out of system swing, hits half the hands. Is that a recycle? Yes, it was. They get another chance. Can they set Asahi? Or is Hinata gonna get his chance for glory? Oh, this is Hinata's chance to prove himself. I love it. The free quick. He not the special. But Ushijima, too good. He can play defense too. Man, Ushijima doesn't blink. Oh, give it to me. I love it. So badass, and he just digs it and crushes it. <laughs> oh, man. That is discouraging. I've been there to like even have no blockers up and to get dug. Oh, that's cool. He's actually respecting Hinata enough to want to take it personally and try to personally co uh, compete against him. This is interesting. I met him on the street. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Ushijima got in trouble. That's for good reason, though. Oh, I hate confidence that has no basis. Interesting. He's trying to personally punish Hinata. Oh, camera in the timeouts. That's, that's nerve-wracking. Oh, they're playing best of five. That means this is going to be multi-episode. I love it. That's right. Ushijima is not perfect. This is best of five. They can only set him so many times, but I don't know, man. Great players will, will rise to the occasion. 
Sakai. Well, Kanosuna was getting better. They were crushed, and then they started hanging with him towards the end. That's the one with the bad hair, and they dialed in the pass there. And Karasuno full offense. The quadruple quick. Oh, Daichi getting his kill too. Getting in on the action. Now we got the, the jazz music playing. That means it's Karasuno time. Nice, uh, nice, uh. Oh, now the roll. Are they going to get a dig? Nope. But at least it's not off to the uh, zero to five start. The center line. I'm assuming they mean their middles. Oh, they're actually a bit. Did they tool Ushijima? Let's see. That is Ushijima with the one and the line under his his jersey number. I love that they are not intimidated by the block because I'm sure he's a, a pretty imposing blocker too. And Asahi just goes up and man buns the ball and tolls him off the block. I love it. Nice kill. Yeah, they gotta find a way to, to get their serving in more tough. That's how you can tire Ushijima. Make him get every set and also get him out of system here. Alright, there we go. Force him to hit off the block. Now even though he couldn't get that, they're starting to slow it down. Little by little, chip away. Great serve from Asahi. Now they said that Ushijima doesn't have the most accurate serves, but they're powerful, so he might hit this one out. <laughs> Sometimes you get lucky, just that's why we always teach players to get behind the ball. <laughs> that's funny. They got best you know the, all the other matches in the tournament have been best of three. And best of five, what's the difference? One, it just makes for a more exciting match and better television. But the real difference is that it's a much better advantage for Karasuno. Because that means that Karasuno, which is already slotted and predicted not to win, they get multiple chances to try to get lucky, to get longer time to figure out Shiro Toizawa. Whereas if it's best of three, by the time they've adapted, the game's already over. So the best of five is, is going to work towards Karasuno's advantage. And we already see how the second set performance is already much better than the first set. <laughs> I like it. The short man syndrome. Got to prove that you're going to beat the tallest guy in the gym. Make relentless there. That's a really well, well, good drawing there. I love how middles can pass on Karasuno. Oh, the drifting one. Is he gonna crush it? Hit Ushijima in the face. Oh, what a good react block from Shiratoi's. That was middle. That's patience there. Now he looks like a horror character. I love it. <laughs> Here are my immediate reactions to episode 2. It was great to finally see Shiro Toizawa and Karasuno battle it out and to get to see the legendary Ushijima finally show his physical prowess and he was everything that the legend was made up to be. Crushing the ball, bouncing the ball to the ceiling, hitting high over the block, hitting high off the block, hitting sharp angle, crushing the jump serve. And the best part about Karasuno, as I said earlier, is that they were not intimidated. Maybe in the beginning they're a little nervous, 
And then Suga just comes in and yells at the team, which is sometimes what you need. So you have to be obnoxious sometimes to break the rhythm. But I'm really curious to see how Karasuno is going to continue to adapt to Ushijima. And I just appreciate that they're, they're not going to be intimidated. And this is all founded on confidence. Kageyama's confidence comes from his ability to play because he knows he's a good player and he believes in himself. What's interesting about Hinata is that it is actually unfounded confidence just like Ushijima said. And actually referring to another episode from season one where I said I actually like Ushijima because he he's not arrogant, he just speaks what he thinks is true. And so far, everything he said so far has been pretty spot on. Hinata is his confidence is higher than his ability. Now, in general, you want your confidence to be maybe a little higher than your ability, but Hinata's confidence is like up here and his ability is down here. Um, but I'd much rather have someone who believes in themselves too much than to have their ability up here, but to have their confidence down here. And I think we all know players that are very talented and have potential to be amazing, but they just simply don't believe in themselves or they give up after one or two mistakes. So that, that's Hinata's one of his best qualities. Um, but it can also get him in trouble because he does weird things like take spikes from people and get a little too crazy or a little too anxious. Uh, but it's, it's a much better situation to be in when you have too much confidence. I'm continually enjoying the new animation and artwork from season three. Sometimes I, I, I think I didn't speak a lot during this episode because I was just enjoying the visuals looking at the detail of the facial drawings and animations and all that good stuff. If I wasn't pausing it as much or not giving as much commentary it's because I was just enamored with the artwork for this season. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We'll see you in the next one.